fishy alert. If you're allergic to fish, this video isn't for you. Unless you're like our buddy Eric, who's very allergic to fish but loves it for some reason. It's okay, Eric, you get a pass. It's for you. Yes, you alien gremlin watching this with your impulses telling you to call the local Japanese restaurant and get a spicy tuna roll. Hold on. Really, you'll want to hear this. What if we told you the sushi you've been eating is faker than the birthday cake flavor? Worst part is, this toxic sushi could literally kill you. You didn't know? Well, there's a mystery in this fishery and we're going to get to the bottom of it in this food spiracy. Contrary to popular belief, sushi isn't the product of a war between aliens, dinosaurs, and fish hybrids. We've got no idea where that story came from. Either way, sushi is so popular that you can literally walk into your local supermarket right now and get one of those adorable sushi rolls for less than 15 bucks. Heck, you could just call your local Japanese restaurant and get some. But hold your horses, this food spiracy is even fishier than the Atlantic. We weren't kidding when we said you've probably been eating fake sushi this whole time. By the time this aquatic food spiracy is unraveled, you'll be putting sushi right up under Panera lemonade on the list of things that could kill you. Originating from Japan, the dish of raw fish, rice, and veggies was once usually saved to be enjoyed during special occasions. Now, it's a popular everyday food both in Japan and outside of it. Since sushi gained widespread popularity in the US in the mid 1960s, no one's been able to put their chopsticks down. Sushi is now as commonplace as pizza, burgers, and even mercury. What? Did we say mercury? Yeah, and we're not talking about the planet. We're talking memory problems, muscle weakness, numbness and tingling, tremors, irritability, the whole nine yards. What gives? For some reason, people just love the taste of raw fish wrapped in what else and dipped in soy sauce. Really, what's up with that? Doesn't it taste all fishy? Apparently it doesn't, but you couldn't get Eric to try it, so let's get right into it. Okay, so we all know what sushi is. And for those who don't, here's a description. A traditional Japanese dish that typically consists of vinegared rice combined with various ingredients, including raw or cooked fish, vegetables, and sometimes other seafood. Think of it as half the characters from Finding Nemo dressed up and served to you with a side of sauce. Now that's cleared up, notice we said fish without telling you what fish. There's literally thousands of fishes in the sea. All those Nemos and flounders swimming around just waiting to be snatched right out of their homes and into our bellies. So what fish exactly goes into sushi? Okay, to sum it all up, there are different kinds of sushi styles, and those sushi styles have recipes all made with different kinds of fish. Tuna, salmon, escolar, you name it. That's just fish. Fish and more fish with the occasional crab, shrimp, and eel. And that's where you come in, brave grocery store survivor, because how can you, the person that only eats sushi when that one friend drags you to a sushi place, tell the difference between raw fish and raw fish? Do you know what you're putting in your mouth when you're hungry and you see some juicy looking maki rolls in the frozen food section of Walmart? You don't? Yeah, we thought so. So let's put our aliens conspiracy cream right here. When it comes to food spiracies, fake fish ranks pretty high up on the list. We get it, okay? You're hungry, you're craving sushi, and you don't wanna have to pay $500 for a professional to rip open an eel in front of you. Understandable, but for one, restaurant sushi isn't even that expensive. We're not talking about some five-star restaurant in Japan where all the chefs know how to juggle sushi rolls with their eyes closed. That would be pretty awesome to watch. We're sure some of you food spiracy theorists would enjoy that, but let's face it, you can't afford the plane ticket. We're talking about sushi at a real accredited local sushi restaurant. Specialty rolls or futomaki are the most common and affordable sushi to order, and they cost just about $12.63 if you pay $4.21 per ounce for fish. Let's compare that to your average supermarket specialty rolls. Those cost about $9.82, $3 less than sushi restaurant specialty rolls. You'll be paying about uh, $3.14 per ounce of fish. As far as a normal day goes, that's simply a little save change. But this is a food spiracy. And in this case, you'll save $2.81 in grocery store, gas station, and supermarket sushi only to poison yourself. Yeah, you heard that right. 
poison yourself because grocery store sushi is absolutely fake. Then again, in this case, so are the restaurant ones. You see, if there's one thing you've learned from food spiracies, it's that if food companies in the great USFA can cut costs by replacing your food with something else, they will. And when it comes to the big sushi saga, restaurants and convenience stores do a little something called species substitution and species alteration. Look, these restaurants know your unrefined alien tongue can't tell the difference between one fish and the other. It's all going to be slathered in wasabi, buried in rice, and covered in soy sauce anyway, so why should they bother? Some fish are uber expensive, and restaurants don't want to have to deal with all that. So, on the occasion that you walk into the sushi bar, wallet out, and ready to spend on what you think is high-quality sushi, chances are you're not getting what you're paying for. All the chefs have to do is switch out the fish. Imagine paying to watch Finding Nemo, only to find yourself at the screening for Padak. The difference being you somehow think Padak is Nemo, so you can't even complain. A 2016 study by Oceana showed that out of all the restaurants it surveyed in New York City, 39% serve fake fish, including all the sushi restaurants they went to. Every single one. Truth is, unless you are eating from one of those fancy restaurants where the fish are cut right in front of you and the chefs can juggle maki rolls with their eyes closed, you're probably eating fake fish. Worse, if you're eating convenience store sushi. But that's not even the worst part. Oh no, folks. This episode of Fish Hooks doesn't end with Milo, Oscar, and Chelsea riding off into the sunset. Or tank light. Or whatever the heck fish ride off into. Nope. It ends with you being poisoned. Okay, let's slow down a bit. So we know that restaurants swap out the fish in your sushi for more cost-effective options. But just how deep down the marina does this go? And what does it do to our bodies? Well, if you're thinking of ordering any sushi with white tuna on the ingredient list, 94% of the time you'll be getting a different type of animal and no tuna at all. One of the most common substitutes for white tuna is a fish called escolar or the oil fish, a nickname obtained from its particularly high oil content. But if you're in the seafood biz, then you'll know it as the x lax fish. That nickname came from the fact that it'll make you poop like crazy. If you thought blue Takis pasta would send you rushing for the johns, then know that the flesh of escolar contains a naturally occurring wax ester called jampilotoxin, a little toxin that the human body has problem digesting. And we all know what that means. This little diarrhea causer is so bad that the Japanese and Italian governments have an outright ban on the importation and sale of Escolar, and the governments of Canada, Sweden, and Denmark require that if you're selling it, you must slap a warning label on it. Probably something along the lines of warning. Please sit next to the restroom with an extra large, extra soft roll of tissue paper in your hands. You're going to need it. Escalar was once banned in America by the FDA in the early 1990s, but sometime in 1998, it was unbanned. So now it hides in your sushi, waiting to bring you to tears. And that's why we love the FDA. Fishy sarcasm. So that tuna sushi you thought messed up your stomach might just not have been tuna after all. It was most likely Escalar doing Nemo's work by giving you the runs. Unfortunately, the old Escolar for tuna swap isn't the only fish fraud you should be watching out for. If you see any sushi with red snapper or halibut on the ingredients list and you're pregnant or a child, run faster than your shoes can take you because it's most likely been swapped with tile fish. If you thought Escolar was bad for making you poop your brains out, then wait till you hear about tile fish. The thing about this little fishy friend is that it's known to have insanely higher levels of mercury compared to other fish species. As we all know, mercury occurs naturally and is present in water bodies, including oceans where the fishes swim. There's also the added bonus of mercury getting into the water through natural processes and human activities, such as industrial pollution. 
Anyways, the thing about the tilefish is that they can accumulate higher levels of mercury in their bodies over time. And this isn't any problem to them, but it is an issue to us because all that mercury can cause permanent lung damage and potential brain damage, as well as central nervous system damage. This heavily affects the nervous system and developing fetuses and children. We're pretty sure you don't want to kiss goodbye to your brain and spinal cord over some knockoff sushi. So run faster than those shoes can take you. Both the FDA and the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, have issued advisories recommending that pregnant women, nursing mothers, and young children avoid or limit their consumption of tilefish and other high mercury fish species. But you're probably not thinking, oh, I must avoid the tilefish when you're craving sushi, so it's really not worth it. To be fair, not all species of tilefish are considered dangerous or have high mercury levels, but wanting to eat sushi shouldn't have you calling your doctor. Except you're good old allergic to fish, Eric. And last but not the least on our list of fish fakes is tilapia being swapped for tuna. Not as dangerous as x lax but it's still kind of annoying when you're paying for tuna and getting not tuna. But uh, swapped fish isn't the only thing you should expect when gobbling down sushi. How would you like your very own parasite? Yup, customized for the walls of your stomach just for you. Sounds absolutely disgusting? Well, that's because it is, and that's what eating raw fish could get you. Back in 2018, some dude had to pull a five-foot tapeworm out of his body. Story goes that he got it from eating raw sushi. Some other guy kept complaining about stomach aches after eating sushi. A trip to the doctors got him to meet his very own parasite, suction to the mucus in his upper abdominal wall. That particular parasite is known as anisakiasis or herring worm disease. And this bad boy attaches itself to your stomach or intestines and causes crazy abdominal pain, vomiting, and fever. If you're lucky or unlucky, it could lead to an allergic anaphylactic reaction. Isn't that great? Your very own parasite that could literally kill you. Okay, so if all your sushi is probably fake and could give you parasites, does that mean you should stop buying it? Well, just to be safe, it's better to splurge on a sushi restaurant that you're aware knows what they're doing than paying 12 bucks for swapped phony and probably diseased fish. If you really need that juicy sushi, try making it yourself at home. It might not taste like the fancy schmancy ones, but at least you know what's going in it. Finally, if you really want that grocery store sushi, then be picky about the ones you choose. A store like Whole Foods has been carrying sushi by Genji, a certified sushi restaurant since 1997. It's arguably the best grocery store sushi and it can be more or less trusted. Okay, you can call the sushi place now. We know you've been itching to.